going to create an applique using the shape, the shape tool. So there's two places for shapes tool. And first I'm going to use this one right up here. It's on our home, our home tab in the little tool window here. And we're going to just click left click once on shapes. And I'm going to pull up a shape. And let's say I'm wanting to create an applique of some kind. And well, with the 4th of July coming up, I'm just going to make it a patriotic themed one. So I'm going to pull up a star. I'm going to drag and make it big. I'm holding down my left mouse key while I drag. And of course, now it, this is actually automatically designed an embroidery design. But we're going to use the shape of this design for an applique. You can do this with any of the shapes inside a palette, plus some of your own, and we'll, we'll touch on that subject just a little bit later. But first of all, when we do an applique, and you know, applique is where you have a background fabric and you want to put another piece of fabric on top of it, stitch around the shape, trim it, and stitch it down so you have one fabric applique on top of another fabric. So the first thing I want to do, I want to get rid of the solid fill stitch in the center. And as you can see, it says shape. So when I drew this, it automatically added this shapes tab. I'm going to go right here to the box that says so, SCW. And I'm going to left click on where it says fill stitch. And I'm going to turn it into a no sew region. I don't want the region area to be sewn. Now you can see I just got rid of all of that. Now I'm left with this star shape, which would make a beautiful applique. But I don't want that zigzag stitch there. I just want a running stitch to create my applique with. And there, there, there it is. So when you do applique in the hoop, it's a three-step process. So first, you're going to stitch down um, this stitch, which is called a placement stitch, on the fabric, the background fabric and stabilizer you already have hooped. So we'd stitch this down. Then we would place our fabric on top of this outline. That way, we know we have enough fabric covering this shape to create an applique with. And then we are going to create a second step. So if you look over here to the left, sewing order, there's step one, that is our placement stitch. Step two is going to be a tack down stitch, and we're going to create that right now. And it's super easy to do, because we're going to go back over here to the home tab, and I'm going to click on duplicate. And now you can see it, it off-centered it just a little bit, but that's okay because now I'm gonna go right after I hit duplicate, I'm gonna go right over here to arrange and move it to the center. Well, the original one wasn't really in the center either, so we want to do that as well. I wanna double click on number one, that's our placement stitch, and move it to the center also. Now, both number one and number two are exactly layered on top of each other, and that's what we want. So when we stitch out number one, that will create our placement stitch. We'll put the fabric on top of it, maybe use some embroidery tape to hold it in place, or you could use a basting stitch on your machine, whichever method you prefer. And then the next step would actually be Number two here, I'm going to double click on it so it's selected because each step of this should be a different thread color. And to change it super easy, it's, it's selected because you can see the handlebars here, the little black boxes. And right there it is, running stitch, and it's black. But we're going to change this one to red. So now I have number one is black and number two is red. 
Just think of if you're sitting at your embroidery machine and you're stitching out, because it will stop at each step by changing using a different thread color for each step, and that will give you time to put down your, your placement fabric. This, number two, this is actually going to be the tack down stitch. And for the tack down stitch, you can use the running stitch, the, the running stitch. Some people use the EV stitch. I don't, all I use is the running stitch for both step one and step two. Once the fabric on step two is tacked down, then we can take the hoop out of the machine. We will not unhoop the fabric and we will trim with a pair of scissors right close and trim all the excess fabric from all the way around this design. Okay, once that's done, we put it back in the hoop. And then we have one more stitch to do. We are going to do the embroidery stitch to cover up all of the raw edges all the way around the machine. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go back to our home tab. We are going to duplicate that design again. And now I'm gonna go over here. We can see number three, this is our last step. We wanna change that color. So we're gonna click it on red and I'm gonna move it to something totally different like a medium blue, just so we can do, this makes it easy to see that the, that the steps are all there and these will actually pull up in your machine when you save this or send it to the machine as a three step process. So next we want to go back to our home tab, arrange, move to center, and now all three of these stars that we've created are exactly stacked on top of each other. While number three is selected, you get to make another decision. We'll go up here to, we don't want a running stitch, right? We want to cover up those raw edges. So you could use a zigzag stitch. And the way to check how big that zigzag is, is to go over here to the right to sewing attributes right over here. And we want, you can tell here the width of your, of your zigzag. Now it says 0 0.08 inches. So for me, I like this to be millimeters because I'm just more familiar with zigzag widths as a millimeter. I'm gonna change it to millimeters and that's two millimeters. So you now know 0 0.08 inches is two millimeters. And I actually like my, if I'm going to use the satin stitch for applique, I like to do at least a three, if not a four millimeter for my applique, okay? That's a matter of personal choice. I just like to use a little bit wider than two simply because you will get better coverage on those raw edges using a slightly wider um, satin stitch than a two millimeter. Okay, so that is actually now we have totally created an applique design using one of the shapes from that shape menu right there. Any of these shapes can be used to create an applique, okay? So if I was happy with that and I wanted to send it to my machine, I would just go right up here, click on the send tab, and I would send it, in this case, to my Solaris or whichever machine you have connected to your software, you could send it to either one. Or I could go right up here and send it to my USB stick, which I did plug in a USB stick before I got started today. And if I wanna do that, I would just select the drive letter associated with my USB stick in my computer. And it has already sent it over to my USB stick. Easy peasy.
Now, <clears throat> let's say that I am actually, I'm gonna turn it back to inches. So right up here, there's your little shortcut to switch between millimeter and inches. And as you can see, I have this set for a nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. So that's basically the size of my hoop, my stitchable area. So let's say that this is going to be a quilt block or a pillow or part of a placemat or table runner. You get the idea. But maybe I want something a little more decorative than just two pieces of fabric applique together. So now I can go here to background fill. I'm going to click on that. And maybe I want to add a pretty decorative fill to the center of the applique. And if I want to add it to the center, I just click there in the center and you see all the little crosshairs that popped up inside of here. So that tells me whatever I select next, that's where it will be applied to. I could also click on here and it would apply whatever I choose to the entire thing. I personally don't think it, that looks the best. So we will add something here in just a moment. So right now inside of this star applique, we're going to add a decorative fill. And I'm gonna click here on the little box and let's see what we have here that might fit in with the theme we're going after. Let's see here. So many decisions. Da, 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 da. So I think I am going to do, I'm going to come down here and use number 26 for the center of my star. It'll just add some good texture to it. You can see there what it looks like. Now, if you notice right here, there's a gap, okay? It doesn't go all the way to the stitching. You can do it either way that you, that is a matter of personal choice. And that's also called the offset. Here is where it controls the offset. So it's a two millimeter offset. If we wanna make that closer, so it goes right up to the satin stitches, we'll put it at zero and hit update preview. And now you can see there is no inner boundary to that fill stitch. So that's really just a matter of personal choice. I'd like it either way. But this time I think I am going to have that 0.08. Offset. I just think it kind of looks cool like that. That's what I'm going to do. So, and then I'm going to click on OK, and then it's going to apply it to our design panel here. Now, next I want to add back, a background image. I want to add a background fill to the outside portion of the star. This would really make a beautiful throw pillow. And that's what I'm pretending this is right now. I'm creating a decorative throw pillow. So I'm gonna hit background and decorative fill. I could select any of these and add it, whatever you want, whatever personal choice, whatever you wanna use. Next. And I'm gonna go with something a little more ge uh, geometric this time. Let's see here. I like this one. I think this would be cool. You know, the waves, rolling waves, amber waves of grain is what I was trying to think of right there. So, and that looks, that's too, for a pillow, that would almost be like to try to give it a trapunto effect with it that close together. So I don't want it that close together. I am going to really crank this number up. I'm gonna put it at two inches and see what it looks like. Oh, so much better. That I actually like, that has movement. I think that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna click on okay. And if I was happy with that, I would now have 
all I needed to do. Now check it out over here on the left. So here's the sewing order. It is actually going to stitch out this back wrap, this last step I added, if I leave it in this direction here, then it would stitch out the center fill. Then it would do the placement stitch. And we don't want that because check it out. If I do that, this placement fill would get covered up by the applique and we don't want that. So whenever you're doing something like this, it's always really great practice to hit this little play button right down here. This is the stitch simulator. And I'm gonna set it to the middle position. And we're gonna see, we wanna, we wanna see, we don't want this to get stitched out before these three pieces right here. Otherwise the applique fabric will cover up the center fill design. So we're gonna hit play. As you can see, it's doing the background, the background fill behind the star first. Let's speed it up a little bit. There we go. And this is how you audition your sewing order to make sure it sews out in the order you truly want it to before you ever stitch on fabric. Okay, so that was the background fill. Now let's go back. And the reason it only did that, and check out what happened when I did that, it got rid of my background fill. So we're gonna undo this again. It's undoing the steps. So let me move forward two more. We got those back now, but the reason it only previewed that stitch out that was the only thing I had selected, was that background fill. I'm gonna click here in the gray area. There's no black handlebars around it. And now I'm going to select all of this. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and go up. And that way they're all highlighted when I release. Now everything is highlighted here. And I'm gonna press that play button again, check it out. Before I just had blue. Now I've got three different color groups here. So we're going to hit the play button. And I'm really gonna speed it up this time. And there, right there is the, is the thing because it stitched out the center decorative fill before the applique steps. And that is not what you want. You wanna do the applique first and let everything else fill in afterwards. So what that means and what that tells me is this, I have to change the sewing order. Now I'm going to hit my undo button and then the forward button again. That brings everything back. I'm going to select my select button, make sure there's no little boxes around it. And now I want to change my sewing order. I want steps three, four, and five to become one, two, and three. How I'm going to accomplish that? I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button, draw up so those three are highlighted. And now while my cursor is right there on number three, I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and drag them up. See that red bar? You want that to be above that number one and release. And now I have my steps in the proper order. Now we'll do the applique placement, applique tack down, the applique satin stitch. Then it will apply the background fill. And then lastly, it will put the decorative fill on top of the applique fabric. Okay, so now if we wanted to save this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit send and I'm gonna send it to my USB stick. Now that is saved, yeehaw. And when I get ready to stitch that out, 
I can now make me a really cool patriotic themed throw pillow, or it could be a series of quilt blocks, you get the idea. That is one way to do applique in palette. And now I'm gonna go up here to design library and I wanna pick out outline shapes. And then I'm gonna go over here and pick out, now all of these shapes are outlines. So they would be way more user friendly to make appliques out of anything in this main category menu. But let's do the basic shapes. And here are some of the ones, some of these are up here in the shapes menu. However, there are more in here than there are over here. For instance, if we scroll down, from here up is what you see over on that shapes tab. From here down are all different ones. Plus, and you'll recognize some of these lines in here from IQ Designer or My Design Center. Lots of fun things to do with that. But all of these can also be used to create an applique like I had just done over here. Another, another place would be in here. Let's see, let's go to leaves. Fall will be here before we know it. And what better time to start on some cool fall applique than the present? So for instance, let's look at some of these leaves. Let's say you wanted to do a table, a fall table runner in time for Thanksgiving, okay? So maybe at the end of each of the table run, on each end of the table runner, you wanna have some leaves arranged, right? So let's do that. List, and this is not gonna be embroidery, this is gonna be applique. So I'm just going to select that one and use the import key. I put it in the center. Now, I'm going to put one right over here. And I'm, go I'm going to enlarge it. And if you saw what I did, I used the crosshair lines to line up this top edge and the right edge to it. Simply because now, before I do anything else, I am going to lose the interior fill design on this. So if I double click on that, they stay, they both stay selected. That tells you to go up here to the shapes. And I want to convert it to stitches because I want to get rid of this. The other way you can do it, and if it was a true non outline shape and broadly design, you'd have to do that. You could go right up here and click on the convert to stitches to change it. However, since both of these popped up under shapes, you can just go right here and get rid of the fill design in the center of the leaf by turning it into a not sewn region. Okay. And the stitch selected for the outline is a triple stitch. And a running stitch is fine for a placement stitch. I'm going to change that to black just so I can see it better. And there's step one. There's our placement stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to create my second step by clicking on my home tab. And this time I'm going to do a copy. and a paste. However, I just want to do a plain paste. And what's cool when you do it this way, copy and paste, it places it right on top of the previous of your original. Remember, when I duplicated it, it offset it a little bit. So if you're not going to, if you're going to place objects, create an applique that's not in the very center of the hoop, you want to use copy and paste because otherwise there's, it's very much more difficult to get those exactly placed on top of each other. So that's the, the biggest difference between copy and paste and duplicate. 
copy and then paste stacks it directly on top of the original. Duplicate will duplicate it and move it off to the side. So it's that makes it easier. If you're gonna move a lot of stuff around, that makes it easier because it's easier to grab onto it. Anyway, now that I have step number two, which is the tack down stitch, we wanna change that. And we're gonna leave it into a running stitch. And then we are going to go back to home and we're gonna copy and paste again. And step number three would be our tack, our, our applique stitch. So now we're gonna go here to shapes and we're gonna change the color of all. I, I waited until they were all there to change everything. So this I'm gonna make step number three red. And we're gonna make it, this time we are going to use a blanket stitch. Step number two, we're gonna make that one blue. And step number one, we're gonna leave it black. But there's our three stitches that you can see right there. If you look down here at the bar, you can see the three different thread colors. Now, I want to put a duplicate applique right over here on this side of the page. And this is the reason I went ahead and did all three steps, because now, check this out. I'm gonna drag and highlight all three of those. I'm gonna go to my home screen. And I have to make sure if we see this, what I want to do, hold on a minute. Okay. What I am going to do is this. Want to select all. So I'm going to do it a different way yet. There we go. Now that I have the little black bars on there, all of my other. Um, commands became available to me. So it's very important, you can see here, all three are selected and you have your black boxes. That's what you, I was looking for. I'm gonna group all of that together now. And what that does, now that those are grouped together, when I do a copy, a duplicate, I'm actually gonna use a range co copy, but first I'm gonna hit the duplicate key and now, there's my duplicate, four, five, and six, my original, one, two, and three. Now when I drag, oops, get that four-way arrows. Now when I drag it, it just dragged both of them together because it put them all together. So I just want to highlight and select. There are select objects. Now I should be able to drag away the just the one that I want. There we go. I move that off. You can see there's my original and there's the one I just duplicated. So that's one way to do it. And then you could just use your mouse and you could move it wherever you wanted it to. But there's a much easier way to do it than that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit the undo button and again, and again, and again, and again. Now I have my original three, okay? So I'm going to drag, right click, select objects. There's my boxes. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go to my home tab, and I'm gonna use that arrange copy tab that we used for our practice last week. But I'm going to arrange a copy of my my complete applique design. So you can use arrange copy for more than just embroidery designs. It's one way to think of it. So if I do, do I want to do mirror? I want to do mirror the vertical. I want them side by side. This is going to be. Remember, I'm designing the end of a table runner design here. So vertical. And 
or there's my ghost image, click. And what I've now done, I have my two leaves pointed towards each other. It's that easy. If you look over here onto the sewing order, look what it also did. It's going, you're going to get to do all the steps. So there's one and two. Those are both of the placement stitches. Three and four, that's both of the tack down stitches. And five and six are both of the applique um, blanket stitches or satin, whatever you choose, stitch to actually finish off your applique with. Pretty cool. What this does, you've only got three steps here, okay? So when it stitches one and two, then you can put down your applique fabric. When it stitches down three and four, both of those designs are tacked down. Five and six finishes it off with the covering up that raw edge. It really beats having to do one applique at a time when you can work on as many appliques that will fit in your hoop at the same time. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So now we've explored different ways to bring different embroidered designs and shapes from our import function over here and from our shapes menu over here up here to create an applique. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could actually keep adding to this at this point. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna highlight all of those, right click, select. You can see how that's all selected now. Then we'll go back to the home tab, arrange copy, and I'm gonna do a horizontal mirror of those two right there. Let's try this and see what happens. There, there it is, there it is. And what I'm doing, there is a dotted line, placement line right here where I'm moving side to side. And what I'm doing, I'm gonna place that right on the center um, crosshair line, one click, and now I have just created four appliques. Check it out over here on the left. One, two, three, four. All, all three steps have a repeat of four now. Pretty cool. So the point of, I've been trying to make with this is from last week, yes, you can use the, you can actually use a range copy on any of these items that you want to. Whether you're creating embroidery designs or applique, if I had went so far as to put fill designs in here before I did the duplicate and the arrange copy functions, it would have duplicated those as well, times two or times four, whichever feature I picked over here. There's even an easier way to do it than that. That really wasn't that bad. But if you want an easy way to create an applique, you still have to get your outline on here, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go up here to shapes, just pick this flag. It looks like a flag to me anyway. Okay, now it remembered what was the last stitch that I created. And that was that ladder stitch, which is a very traditional applique stitch. So I'm gonna swap that to a running stitch simply because for what we're about to do, we don't need nothing fancy. Palette's gonna take this one shape, see there's only one step over here, and create an entire applique design according to the shape that I have on this screen. When I go to the home tab, I can go all the way over here to my wizards, and click on the applique wizard. And what this brings up, here is where we put in all of the of our steps for an applique and palette will create all of our layers by itself. That's something to think about over here under sewing order. If you've ever used any other type of graphics programs, 
art programs. This is the same thing as what they call like in Photoshop or Illustrator or any art and sketching program. This is a layer. Sewing order is the same thing that you've heard referred to as layers in other graphics arts program. This is your layers over here is another way to look, think of this. So, applique material. Yes, we want that. So we're gonna leave that one, click yes. If you select no, that would be if you were going to actually have, if you were just creating the design and weren't going to actually applique fabric down underneath these stitches, okay? If you're going to put fabric down underneath your, your outline stitches, that's what you want to do. So yes, here. And here, tack down stitch, this is where you can, yeah, want that. It has the V-stitch selected for this, for the tack down. That's what it actually likes to use. The covering stitch is our last step, okay? So here is where you get to select from zigzag, the E stitch, the V stitch, or a chain stitch. So zigzag means satin stitch, E stitch means blanket stitch. I'm gonna select the E stitch and I'm gonna leave these set at normal. And we are actually going I'm gonna actually click on the add button here and click on okay. Now, what happens is though, if you see this right here, I wanna go over here and I'm gonna change this outside thread color to something we can see. Let's turn that to red, there we go. Okay, let's go back to our home menu and we're gonna go right over here. And you'll see though, this line where I have my cursor at right now, that is your tack down, your placement and tack down stitch. The V stitch actually stitched it away from that. And you wouldn't want that in the real, in real world applique, at least I wouldn't. So what happened there is this. I'm gonna do the undo button. I'm gonna do it again. So I just wanna go back to my original. Now I'm going to hit, I have to select it. And then I can actually click on the applique wizard. We want that, yes, that's there. Here, here we clicked on add. You want to hit replace. What that does is, the spacing is blended between these two settings right here. Click on okay. And now when you look at this, and I'm gonna zoom in, you can see there are those stitches and they line up perfectly. This inner stitch right here, let me click my select button, right here, and I want that unselected. There we go. <laughs> this line of stitching right here, that was your placement and tack down stitch. This, and since you cut it a little bit, the fabric when you trim it is a little bit away from this stitch out to this way. This is actually gonna line up perfectly along the edge of that fabric and do your ladder stitch to stitch down. If I had chosen the, the zigzag stitch, which is actually a satin stitch in this instance, it would go from here to here. So very important to remember, when you're using that applique wizard, the very last step, you want it on replace and not add. That way you get a, the true look of what an application looks like. Okay. So next, I'm going to fit that to my screen. That was just by clicking on this, I put it all back on my screen in one big swoop. 